Welcome to this week's edition of Connect. This is a moment in our week where we connect and engage with our faith. I want you to think of it as a pause and a moment to meditate, perhaps, in the midst of your week. On Sunday, we're going to be talking about Jesus in the temple, and we will dive into his emotions and how he got a little angry. But tonight, I want to take one step back to the events that happened before he was angry. Tonight, I want to take you to a party. You know what parties are, right? Those things that we had in the times before where we gathered and enjoyed food and friendly conversation. Well, tonight, our scripture lesson will take us to one such gathering where people rejoiced and were glad together. It is a wedding, and that is cause for celebration. But in the midst of that celebration, Jesus encounters a problem. And how it is fixed? Well, that's quite amazing. Before we begin, let us take a moment now together in prayer. Gracious and holy God, we come into this time hopeful. Hopeful that we will meet you here. Hopeful that we will uncover some wisdom that might guide us. That we might encounter your presence once more. And in so doing, be refreshed. Be refreshed and energized for the days ahead. Receive our offering of worship this day and bless us in our efforts as we seek to know you better. To more fully understand your way for our lives. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today our scripture lesson is from the Gospel of John, and we're beginning in chapter 2, starting at the first verse. The translation I am going to be reading today is called the Kingdom Translation. Let us begin. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus, and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. The wine ran out. Jesus' mother came over to him. They haven't got any wine, she said. All right, mother, replied Jesus, but what's that got to do with you and me? My time hasn't come yet. His mother spoke to the servants. Do whatever he tells you, she said. Six stone water jars were standing there ready for use in the Jewish purification rites. Each held about 20 or 30 gallons. Fill the jars with water, said Jesus to the servants, and they filled them right up to the brim. Now, draw some out, he said, and take it to the chief steward. They did so. When the chief steward tasted the water that had turned into wine, he didn't know where it had come from. But the servants who had drawn the water knew. He called the bridegroom. What people normally do, he said, is to serve the good wine first, and then the worst stuff, when people have had plenty to drink, but you've kept the good wine till now. This event in Cana of Galilee was the first of Jesus' signs. He displayed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples. He remained there for a few days. This is the first miracle in the Gospel of John and what a miracle it is. It involves a party that's been going on for three days. That's right, a three-day party. Can you even imagine? It sounds like heaven. And just as it's about to go south, Jesus steps in and he saves the day in a quiet way. There is no stage, no drawing attention to what he's doing. He simply takes water and turns it into wine. That's it. And he allows the couple to continue celebrating their union. And it all happens at a wedding. And it's all about keeping the party going. And what does that tell us about Jesus? Well, this story as a whole tells us a lot. It tells us that we can depend on Jesus and also that he's really good to his mother because she asks for something and even though he's not ready, he comes through. Interestingly, Jesus's mother doesn't play a huge role in this gospel. This is only the first well, this is the first of two occasions where we see Mary in the Gospel of John, and the next time we happen upon her is when she is at the foot of the cross. Here now, though, she shows us something that is very significant, that Jesus is someone who you can believe in. Jesus is someone upon whom you can depend. There are clues about who Jesus is, hence little breadcrumbs left all throughout the Gospels. And if we're paying attention, if we're watching, we can see this. But so few do watch, don't they? If you look at this story, those who are involved in the miracle, they aren't the party goers. It is instead the servants who witness, who see what Jesus can really do. 
So often we get caught up in life, get caught up in what is happening, that we miss the beautiful moments of intervention as they, as they occur. So often we are distracted by what is swirling around us in our lives that we cannot see the wonder that has happened in those circumstances. Those moments where God bursts onto the scene, where quiet intervention occurs. And because of that, only a few see it. Because of that, only a few are engaged. A few look, a few want to know more. If you've made it this far, you're one of those people who wants to know more, who wants to see more, to be part of it. And that's fantastic, even if it's not flashy. I mean, look at the people Jesus surrounded himself with. They were your average, average everyday people, the servants, the fishermen, his mother. They were people like you and me who were present and watching, who were ready and willing to act when called upon. They wanted in on the things God was doing. And so they were invited into those things. That's all it takes. It's not about knowing the most or having the most. It isn't about power or status or importance. It's about willingness to serve and a desire to be part of something bigger than yourself. Oftentimes, especially in our times today, we see faith as an individual thing. It's something we practice, something we choose to do in our own time in our own way. It's kind of like independent study at school. We like those projects instead of those group projects. The tricky part here though, is that God, God very much likes a group project. Just look at this miracle. It requires the faith of Mary, the willingness to serve of the servants, confirmation of the steward and the witness of the disciples. And also let's not forget the action of Jesus because Jesus is the one who transforms the water into wine, but he does not do this in isolation. It's all in the presence of others. And the transformation of the water into wine affects the others. That sounds an awful lot like people, doesn't it? Following in the way of Jesus is rather transformative. And as you are transformed, you cannot help but touch the world differently. You cannot help but impact it in different ways. At this party, Jesus does something wondrous for the host, and he reveals a little something of himself. And it's all done with others, with others who are willing, who are responsive, who are ready. This miracle saved the hosts from social disaster, but it offered more than just that. It gave certain individuals a chance to participate in the wondrous workings of God. God is doing wondrous things all the time. And if we're watching, if we're willing to respond when asked, we can be part of this work too. We can help bring change, make a difference, and work towards the transformation that this world needs. We are invited into the work. We just have to have faith and accept the invitation. Please join me now in prayer. Creator God, you spoke this world into being, and you came to live with us in it. You invited your people into the work you were doing, and this invitation, it still stands today. We thank you for the gift of new life, for the transformation you offer each one of us, and we thank you for the opportunity to be a part of your transformative work in this world. We ask you now for your continued intervention in our lives. Nudge us where we need to be nudged. Open our eyes and help us say yes. Say yes to opportunities you present to us. Say yes to you. These things we pray in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Just remember that life, well, it's more of a group project than you might have thought. And God, God uses each one of us and our talents to do his work here on earth. Today we saw the faith of Mary and the willingness of the servants to serve come together with Jesus to create something wonderful. And there were some witnesses too. Let's not forget the witnesses. Even though they didn't actually do anything in this miracle, they were able to share what had happened with the world, which is equally important. God uses his people in all sorts of ways if they are willing. So ask yourself this question, am I willing? Because if you are willing to be part of the action, then God will invite you into it. Go now in peace. Go in love. Go in joy and serve the Lord. 
We end tonight with some music courtesy of Chris McCloskey. I leave you now with his rendition of Just As Just as I am.